This is the Bolos Baptist Church here. I work here for many years. In fact, this church started when I was in Bible school here, back in 1946. And then I left and went to several other places to, to work. Then I came back here in 1959 and uh, stayed, stayed till 1976. In that time, there was nobody living in this area here. It was empty, and now you can see it's a crowded area. And the church was small and it grew. When I left, it was 1,500. Now they have 3,000 members going in the church. In one communion service, they had about 1,000 people taking communion here. Last time we were here, two, two months ago. Je suis à la paix du Seigneur soit avec vous. Amen. Mes amis, tout le monde qui passe ici de Bolos, vous te mettez aux États-Unis, vous te mettez au Canada, vous ne pouvez pas oublier de chanter Bolos. Yo. Around 1940, there was a group of uh, missionaries that came to establish in Haiti and preach the gospel. The, the name was the Gospel Mission. And uh, they bought about uh, 25 acres of land here. And at that time, I was a first or second year student in Bible school. And uh, after we bought this land, we came here and started working. I worked around 1944-45. I worked in the building, in putting up this building. There was nothing else around here. It was all empty. And uh, we built the school, and uh, I was one of the first students in that school from 1944 to 1948. I graduated in 1948 here, uh, which means that uh, I have been in the ministry for 60 years, coming from 1948 to, 19, uh, to 2008. And uh, I worked in several places after I graduated Bible school. I went to several places in Haiti starting churches under the mission and working as pastor of churches under the mission. And uh, it went for quite a while before I went to the United States to study. Uh, the missionaries live on the second floor here, and we students were on the first floor. There were about uh, uh, 19 students when we started. Of course, when I graduated, uh, there were only six of us who graduated. And most of them are gone now, but two of us are still living and working for the Lord. So I praise God for the for missionaries that have come here, that have done a good job in establishing churches, in preaching the gospel. Because of those missionaries, we have churches all over the country now. In a population of uh, 10 million, about 30% uh, of the Haitians have accepted Christ. Uh, and are living a clean Christian life for God. We praise God and we thank you, churches in the United States, who have sponsored these missionaries to come to our country, and that's why I am here. After my wife died uh, a few months ago, I married Huguette. Uh, Huguette was a member here in the church. I baptized her right here in the church, and so both of us have a very good souvenir of my ministry here in the church. And so she is now my wife, my wedded wife in the Lord, Sister Uget. So the Lord is doing a tremendous work in, that, uh, in this area here, and the church is like a beacon in this area. And I praise God for the part that I had in making it happen.
this is the Oswald J. Smith Clinic in uh, a place called Chibé, way out in the country. This was the sugarcane country. The big meal was in port points There were trains, uh, small trains such as to um, a railroad system that used to carry the cane here for to port points As when you look around, you will see mountains all around us, and there is a large community here, and we are the only a place for health care. It was built around 1978. Yeah, the doctor is here. We'll be able to see him and these people are waiting for him. This is uh, the doctor who is in charge of the clinic of the, it's now a hospital. They have about 10 people hospitalized here. He is the grandson of the man who owned the land here. And it was his uncle who introduced me to his father and then his father sold us the land here. That's one acre, and we build all this on it. And because of the political situation, also they have closed the place for about 10 years. Then two years ago, they reopened it. We have Pastor Marcellus. He is the first administrator around 1978. This is the pharmacy, and uh, that's another place where we can use medicine that you send from the United States. After they have seen the doctor, the doctor gives them the prescription and they can buy it here if they want to. And if we have any medicine that comes from outside, it's sold to the best price for them. In two years, since uh, January 16, 2006, we've seen more than 15,000 people. This is the lab here. And the doctor was explaining us that uh, this is all the microscope they have, very weak and antique, and so they need better microscope. This is the, the vaccination room. So when you have babies with diarrhea, vomiting, so we can keep them there to rehydrate. This is uh, the doctor's office here, where they do the examination of patients. This is all they have for a maternity in a community of 35,000 people. He says if he were not from this community, he would never accept this job to come and work here in that condition. Uh, she's here for transfusion. We are here at uh, Nason Evangelical Church. This is a church that started with us our ministry started here around 1982, and the Lord has blessed the work tremendously. We started with nothing, just with one little room where we were meeting. And this little room becomes a, big, uh, become a building, an apartment, the apartment then for school. Then we put a top on top of it, another story. Then we build the church and we build the office complex. And so the Lord has worked tremendously within these few years from 1982 when we started. We bless his name. When I left here, after a few years, the church grew up and I felt that the Lord wanted me to move to something new. And so I moved. And uh, we had another one of my assistants that became pastor and he also moved away. And uh, Pastor Enoch uh, Remo has become the pastor of the church. And you have been here so many, how many years? Seven years. He has been here seven years. And the church is going well. It just keeps growing and uh, growing past the capacity of the building now. 
but they are still uh, having one service. He says soon they will have to start two services on Sunday morning. <laughs> and uh, so the community is very happy of what is going here, and I am happy. This is the Afka village, the entrance gate. Inside of here, a lot of things are happening. School for kids, kindergarten, feeding program, clinic. This is the pharmacy. We thank God that the group has come here and they brought all kinds of medicines. Garage and uh, you name it, we have it. If we don't have it yet, it's in the plane. We are doing the best we can, and the Lord is doing the job. We bought this land here since back in 1986, but we did not start working on it till the 1990s because we had the dream, but we did not have the funds to do anything. And uh, then we realized that there were people waiting because young people who wanted to go, who needed to go to school, people who wanted to learn things that they can do in order to earn a living. And now uh, all of this was going on. And uh, till the Lord just opened the door. This church here started in 1998. Uh, uh, so it is uh, 10 years old and has grown. Now we are happy our, our church is growing, the church building. We are making a lot of progress here, so we, you can see now we are this this part. The roof is a, a an ex exciting part for us, so we're happy to see it done. But we had no money to finish the church, so we built one room. We have the big expectation that we are going to have a large and nice church for the community. They're they're, they're building a port. So uh, there'll be an entrance to several doorways up on the top, upper level here. By the time we get this done, there should be another truck out here. Maybe there are over 30,000 people living here. We are using all the capacities that the Lord has given us to win them for Jesus Christ, and they are responding. For a good while, the people in this community wanted a clinic. We started building. We put up this building. And uh, a good part of it is done by uh, work teams that came and worked together with the uh, Haitian young Christians. This is the room where they receive the patients for examination. We have Mrs. Mopwe who works here. She's a full-fledged nurse and a quite an advanced one. She can do many things that uh, she learned from the doctor. This is our dental clinic here. The doctor is here four days a week and the people in the neighborhood that's for many of them that's the only dental care that they have. Dr. George is from the church uh, from uh, FCCO in uh, the United States uh, and Miranda also. We actually have uh, some of the students in the local dental school. What I'm seeing in Haiti is a lot of gum disease that's what I've been treating mostly with a few extractions and show them on models how to better take care of their teeth. We hope to come back here every year, be as one brother with a Haitian. This is the kindergarten part of the school. That's the first building put up in the property. That's uh, the building for, the, for kindergarten. There are 31 kids, 31 kids in the classroom, but they are coming class again. They have three classes. So they have over 100 kids here. So this is a very important part of the program. Start with the kids from the beginning, teach them the word of God, teach them what it is to be saved, get them to accept Christ, and then there they go on in life and also in Christian life. This is the school, part of the school anyway, mainly the elementary part of it. And uh, we have 500 kids here. A 
and remember that uh, we have uh, they all <laughs> they all have a meal every day except uh, today Friday. But uh, they you can see they are happy kids. They love their schools. They love their teachers, and we love them. We are helping many schools all across across the country. Africa has about over 100 kids sponsored. This is our garage. We have had the vision of starting a shop here where people can bring their cars. And this garage has been doing a good job helping people who are in need. Also take care of our own, own cars because we have several pickup trucks and cars doing work here. And all that need running vehicles. So that makes it very important to have a good garage. We have not discovered a the real name for this yet. But uh, what we have in mind here is a vocational center, or if you want to call it a trade school, where the kids who finish school, high school with us here, can come here and learn something that they can use for the rest of their lives. It might be computer science, it might be mechanic, it might be how to put together a good house, to build a house and uh, build cabinets. It will be two stories this way and one story on top. And this is where we'll have the different classrooms. And uh, this is our aim. That's our next dream now, realizing this vocational center for the area. And we'll be having kids probably from all over Haiti who want to attend this place here. This is a piece of empty land here, but we do not have enough land to keep the land empty. This is safe for a project. We want to build a youth center here. You see how it is here? But when we come with a, with a tractor and flatten it down to the, all the way down to that valley, that's a lot of land we have here. So we, will, we are working about it now well, we don't know when we'll be able to start, but the project is there in our mind. It is very important to have a paved road coming from the gate up to the top of the land where we have, we have uh, the houses here where a lot of people are living, about 70 people living in the village here. And uh, without a paved road, it rains hard, torrential uh, rain, when it, work, when it rains here. So it is very important that we would have a road, uh, a paved road that will keep the dirt down so that uh, the rain will not be digging holes in our road. And uh, beside that, a road certainly would do a lot for the value of the property. A lot of children are in the street here. Some of them sleep in the street with the mothers are alone. But uh, the Lord has made it possible for us because of a group in uh, North Carolina in the United States who had a vision to help the children in Haiti. We build this place and we have about 20 girls here ranging from age seven or yes, about seven to 10. This is one of the best things that the Lord is doing through us here for the future of Haiti. Providing lodging for people who are living in the streets, especially women and their children, was one of the aims of Lidi when she started the project that's called AFCA, Association of Christian Women in Action. This is one of the duplexes. That's a two apartment, three 
small rooms and a place for people to cook in the back. And uh, we have uh, about seven or eight like that built in the village. Lee Dinwell is the founder of the AFCA project. She put a lot of hours, day and night, to keep this thing going, away from downtown till we move to our own land here. That uh, having homes for people to live was her dream. Having school for children to go and receive an education, that was her dream. And the dream is finally coming true. But Lydia is not here anymore. She died uh, almost a couple years ago. And uh, her remain is here. We'll be in heaven together. And but our ashes will remain here. Ashes to ashes and dirt to dirt. This is what it is. But the vision keeps on.